Ki runga, tuia te ki runga, tuia ki raro, tuia ki waho, tuia ki roto, tuia te hera tangata, karongo te po, karongo te ao, homie huie taikie. Tēnā koto katoa, uh, ko Mormond te monga, uh, Aberdeenshire, Scotland, uh, ko Yugi te awa, ke, ko Ralph te hapu, ko Innes te iwi, ko Fi Amberton to ko Ingoa, tu moaki o Pukiariki. Good morning. Um, good afternoon, is it? No, no, no morning. Um, thanks so much for an opportunity not only to speak but to listen. What a, an amazing group of people you've brought together today, and uh, I feel very privileged to be here. Uh, and in my own tongue, it's often fine to see so many Kent faces among you. Uh, it's great to see so many people I, I know here, and I'd like to acknowledge particularly my colleagues um, in council, but also uh, our Kamatawa for Pukiariki, who are a very, very active part of uh, Pukiariki in helping guide us and um, helping that develop our knowledge of tikanga. Um, I was berated a few months ago at the opening of uh, Nati Mutunga's uh, exhibition, Mutunga, um, for saying that Pukiariki is Hill of the Chiefs. It is not. I'd just like to make that clear publicly now. <laughs> <laughs> I now have I've got it right. Pukiariki happens to have been uh, the name of uh, the very eminent place where this early uh, picture was drawn and painted from, uh, looking out on early New Plymouth. And it was born nearly 10 years ago, and I feel uh, very privileged to work there with such a fantastic group of people. And the whole ethos of Pukiariki was built on the uh, understanding that it would be a combined, not only library, not only museum, but also uh, a place where you can come to find out more about Taranaki as a, a gateway and a portal uh, for, for, uh, to Taranaki so that you can find out about, about the world and find out about Taranaki. And I think that um, the interesting thing for us as a, a group in Pukiariki is trying to create a place, a safe, neutral place, where people can come and uh, discuss with no values, no judgment, things that they don't know about uh, and to grow that knowledge. And one of the aspects that I find very interesting and very comfortable is the chances that I do have in, in going into the Maori world. I feel, I think it must be something to do with my Celtic, Celtic heritage, but it feels very, very comfortable, particularly the Manakitanga. You just can't get out of a Scottish house without having, out having a full meal put in front of you, no matter what time of day you can go in there. Uh, and that resonates very strongly with me. But another thing that I feel very strongly about, coming from my Scottish background, is um, during, during the Enlightenment in Scotland, learning was very much at the heart of the innovation there. And uh, I loved hearing the speakers earlier today talk about the importance of learning and it being a real key to the future, not necessarily ne necessarily adding a load of string of, um, you know, uh, letters after your name, you know, whether it be Master of Arts or PhD, whatever, but it's, it's opening people's minds and helping people uh, be creative thinkers, to think outside that box, to challenge statistics, to challenge newspaper headings, to challenge their world and think differently because we're going to need everything we can get going on into the next few decades. So I do feel very privileged to be allowed into uh, the Maori world to learn more about it. And it's only since I've gone to Te, Ana, uh, Te Wananga o Aotearoa in the last few weeks where I've been attempting to, um, to learn te reo. I've only been in New Zealand nine months, so just uh, let me some slack, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but I think that the thing that really strikes me about Tereo is the fact that it's not just learning a language like learning French, as I did at school, or learning German, as I did at school. But I did learn uh, linguistics at university, and there's, there's nothing quite like Tereo for giving you an insight into uh, the culture. 
And so I really see, um, even though there's plenty of opportunities in WIT and other uh, formal learning education places in, in Taranaki, there's also room for informal learning. And I think that that's where the Pukiariki really holds a very important place. Um, and it's very easy for us to think, particularly um, when we're talking about Maori worldview, is to think of Pukiariki purely as a place to keep taonga or even uh, keep stories alive. But in reality, we've got to really think about the other part of our business too, which is the library side, the research side, the fact that we do deliver scholarship, scholarly research there. Um, and I'd love to see the day where we can support <coughs> scholarly research for, for Maori research. That would be a fabulous thing, and I can't see why we can't do that sooner rather than later. I know that my team are very keen on um, uh, giving youngsters a chance to come in and do cadet roles. We're certainly getting a, a Canadian cadet. We're one of only a handful of museums around the world that um, the Canadians choose to come to. Um, and you know, a, a staff member did ask me, well, why are we bringing in a Canadian cadet when we really should be having some of our own? It's, it's, it's a good point. But um, I think some of the statistics are really quite interesting. It, the, there's lots of worldwide statistics around joining a library. It's actually a child who's under the age of five who has, by, well, you've heard all the statistics around bilingualism, how much it improves your, um, uh, your uh, IQ and no doubt your emotional quotient too, not just your intelligence quotient. But a child that's um, joined a library under the age of five has been proven um, evidence-based to go on and to, to earn more, to have more choices in life, and to even vote more. So I think that we really need to be, it's all very well saying it's just a good thing to be a member of a library. We've got 40,000 members, um, card-carrying members of Pukiariki uh, in the Taranaki community, and we need it to be more. That's only 56% of the population. It's, it's pretty good. But the other statistics that I really enjoy um, bragging about, although I had nothing to do with it, was it took about six years for Hemi Sundran to um, sit on the egg that was the Mutunga um, exhibition, to grow an interest in it, to grow the co collaboration between Nati Mutunga and to grow um, between Nati Mutunga and the Pukiariki staff, researchers, educators, librarians, that richness that is Pukiariki. It's one of the few places that brings all of those uh, professions and specialists into one building to help bring out those stories of Nati Mutunga and tell it, not in a perfect way, we're learning, but it was a, a fantastic way of not just bringing um, the stories alive and to create a, a set of stories that can sit on the internet way after the um, exhibition's finished, but it also brought us a range of fantastic events um, facilitated by Tawaka McLeod. And I just remember the last night after, when we were doing the, um, uh, the final event, Dion Tutor came up to me and he said, this is great, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it's pretty good. And he said, we've got to do this every year. And I said, we do. And he said, <laughs> he said we in Nati Mutunga are really proud of our... Um, we're great at leadership and we really like to bring academic rigour into what we do. And I said music to my ears, what would you like? So we're, we're now talking about running a set of annual seminars. Now, so what? It's great, but we have to really concentrate on the outcomes. And I think that that's the one message that I would say today, is that we really need to concentrate on what's in it for you and what's in it for the rest of the community and really concentrate on uh, what outcomes you want. Because one of the things that when, the, when Bill um, and his team created the Wars exhibition, which incidentally is touring, is just about to open uh, in the next few weeks in Nelson, so that's a very proud moment for Taranaki that we're uh, getting one of our exhibitions out there. And we, where are you? We, I can see you a little waving your hand, is organising a busload uh, <laughs> of, um, of you to go down and help with the tikanga is that uh, after the research was done, it came to, um, it came to light that 87% of people who'd been to the wars exhibition had changed their mind. And that's the business we're in the business of, is really helping people listen to any worldview that might be out there, to be able to challenge 
anything that they hear and not be called a redneck, not be called some sort of extremist, but to say, I just want to know a bit more. And that's, that's really um, the business that we're in at the moment. Finally, I think um, the one thing that I wanted to also mention today is that there's a really interesting side to museums world happening, and it's happening through the Pacific areas. I'm not directly involved in this, but um, I know that the head of Tapapa is, and he's in with the um, head of uh, Aboriginal um, and uh, Indigenous um, librarianship and, and museumship. And what we're doing is we're, we're looking at a, a new period where traditionally our museums were very much based on a European model of sticking things away in glass cases or hiding things away so you can't touch them. And then you'd keep them there forever, locked in time. And it's just so flying in the face of Maori worldview of the, the natural life cycle of things. So there is a movement to think about another way of allowing certain parts of the collection to be handled, to make sure that they are looked after and loved and that their Māori is protected and grown rather than losing that Māori that they might have. So um, watch this space. I'm not very sure what it's going to br bring for us. Um, but some of, the, some of the challenges, I think, I loved hearing the words today about collaboration. Um, I loved the words about um, you don't, well, I think the important thing is you don't need to do it all yourself. There's lots and lots of people who have shared outcomes in the community. It's just a matter, particularly as we're going into this difficult time in the world, is to share that collaboration and make sure that no one partner does become um, the leader and get all the benefit. Um, but sometimes that's a challenge because sometimes it's just an easier to do it my way and if you don't do it my way, take the highway. And collaboration isn't easy, it's like a marriage. <laughs> and, and sometimes you have to have these courageous conversations and that's where I think a, a healthy respect that does take years to grow. And I'm very lucky at Pukiariki that I have staff members who've w worked uh, with Iwi um, for 20, 30 years. And that trust is something that my team are adamant that no one will break. So it's, it's great to have that um, dedication to that. Um, just a reminder too that the Iwi were very, very much a part of this little cohort of um, excitable, uh, excited Taranaki organisations who actually put forward the t $13 million to match the new Plymouth Council 12 million to, to create Pukiariki. And we're very, very keen to make sure that as we collaborate on to the future, it has to benefit all of these people, but in balance. It can't be swung towards one party or another, and that's something that I think is really, really important to, to um, underline. So I'd like to finish with the Tamariki, because it's all about them. Um, we as uh, older people in the generations think we know it all. Uh, we've taken years to get this station in life. But in reality, it's some of the youngsters that are going to come through that will have the ideas. Um, and it's all about the children. Um, so I'm really looking forward to um, a robustious discussion uh, with you all later. And thank you very much again for your time today. Norera, te na koto, te na koto, te na katoa.